Continuing from the previous video in the data stepper, we're going to take a look at the full assembly line debugger. Now I start that through the same button here. And the first time we debug an assembly line, we always go to the data stepper. But I can switch to the full debugger by pressing this button, just as I can go back to the data stepper here. As with the data stepper, we're shown all the con grids which give us an overview of the data moving into and flowing out from our assembly line. Off to the right, we have a watch area. So here we can see the contents of a work entry. And if execution now is within the scope of a connector and the con entry is available as well, we can see what it contains. We get a listing of all the variables, the script variables that are registered in that script engine for the running assembly line even if we've connected to a remote server running on some other platform. And we can build our own watch list, which can be individual variables, or they could even be JavaScript expressions that we want evaluated every time the debugger stops processing and gives us control. Here on the left-hand side, we see an outline of our assembly line, similar to what we saw in the data stepper. First of all, it's showing us the hooks that are enabled. We can double click on any of these, we can actually get onto the script. If we want to see all the hooks, not just those that are enabled, we have a button down here to have those displayed. Just as we can also now view attributes. Our attribute maps now show up, and we can take a look at the individual attribute map assignments. Now, looking at the top of this list, you probably notice that we have slightly different buttons for stepping through our assembly line. We still have a stop button and a continue button, and the next button is now called step over. And this allows us to walk from one component to the next, not just from connector to connector, but also to our branches, to components that are underneath the branches, through loops, anything else that we have of, of uh, articulated logic in our assembly line. And finally, we have a step into. And step into allows us to walk into the scripts of our hooks, or our attribute maps, or our script components. So to test this, I'm going to put a breakpoint here. By selecting, or by setting this check mark, that means I'm telling the debugger that if I continue the assembly line, I want execution to stop at this point. I can do the same thing in script by double-clicking here on the margin or by right-clicking and toggling the breakpoint at that spot. And I can also right-click at any of these places and choose Run and Break here, which sets up a temporary breakpoint, which is only valid until I stop at that point and then it's gone. So now I've run to our breakpoint on no match. We see the script come up, and I can now use the Step Into button to actually walk my way through my scripted logic. And you'll notice here in the Log Output area that as soon as I step past that next line, the output line is written. If I step again, it's going to skip back to the topmost component, and we're going to read in the next entry. Now just as we have in the data stepper, we've got the log output down here and we've got the JavaScript evaluation line. And what I'm showing you here is also possible from the data stepper. So from here I can define new attributes. Every time I press enter, it executes that line. In addition to script variables, I can access the various attributes in work and con. And I can even make changes to them. If I use the arrow down from my JavaScript evaluation line, I can go back to a command I've issued previously and re-execute it. So now I've actually changed the full name attribute of the work entry, and that will be reflected in my output. All this additional control 
gives you unique insight into what your assembly line is doing and how it's performing. You're not dependent on having input data that's going to exercise all the various branching logic. Instead, you can make these changes here directly, interactively, and force processing down these paths, allowing you to test all the various bits of your solution. And because breakpoints can be hidden away down in scripts, we've got a handy button here for removing all of your breakpoints.